35. Um, I know everybody's anxious to get into, let's start the meeting, uh, uh, Jessica. Okay. Um, actually, uh, I, I don't know whether everybody's had the opportunity of meeting Jessica on New Clark. Um, yes. She's, she has, she is sworn that if we treat her good this morning, that she will never leave our committee. Ah. Okay. And on the other hand, we did the same thing, but she left us. <laughs> but, um, welcome, Catherine. Okay. And again, you know, she's still learning uh, how the town works with the different committees. So let's give her a little slack. Okay. Uh, let's call a meeting to order. And uh, we have a somewhat busy agenda. And um, let's begin, I guess, with uh, the minutes. Everyone has had an opportunity of looking at the minutes. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Um, I didn't see anything that really stood out to me. It was basically the financial information. Uh, the website I'm sure everybody has looked at, and um, I'd just like to get a motion to accept the motion. Second. Second. Uh, before we go into the finance, uh, there's some things that I, uh, I didn't have included, so it's a little couple of added items. Um, when I looked at the minutes, I was looking at the uh, website review, and uh, uh, there were two things that I had to bring to the committee's attention that we're going to look into, because I've spoken to Jessica this morning about, is one is the, um, the calendar dates, okay, they're not visibly on the home screen showing the dates of our committee meetings. <laughs> It's it's in the agenda side, but you really have to scroll through to find out what data is done. So they're going to look into it. And the other big oversight that just came about was um, our QR codes on the preserves. Uh, there is nothing with this land is your land, so those QR codes are not working. Okay, and there was well, those are Q, for this land, those QRs are for this land, is your land? Yes, well, so the idea was when the QR codes, anybody with a smartphone would get the map, uh -huh. okay, and they would get a little history on the property. Okay, so those codes are not working. So I would, I would talk this morning about it. Uh, they're going to look into seeing how they can restore that or get that in because that was a really a good feature that we had with QR codes that they gave history, a mapping, you know, it, it, it talked about the stewardship plan as well as the history of the property. So when they changed over to the new system that got lost, is that what happened? It, it didn't get lost. There were some glitches where I guess it couldn't get carried forward. Okay. okay. So I think uh, I brought it to everybody's attention. Uh, I, I suggested everybody else look at the website. I've struggled a little bit working with it. Uh, the only other piece that I thought there was a little bit of a struggle is that when you go on <clears throat> CPF, if where the agenda is, it, yeah, where the agenda is, it shows media. And if you click on the media, okay, uh, it, it doesn't bring you into the actual meeting by Zoom. Okay, I, I know that we should a recorded meeting of like of a past meeting. No, the current meeting. Oh, the current meeting. So in order to get in, you need to have the link, which is really on the bottom of the agenda sheet that you link into. I thought it's also on the website. Yeah, too, does, though, isn't no? it YouTube or something? Yeah, it, it, it is there. But what I'm saying to you is you're not coming in as a member of the of the you're not actually coming here. You're looking at it through YouTube. So people, there's two ways of looking at, at meetings. Okay, you can either go to YouTube, you can follow it, or if you go to the town link, then you're actually here. I got you. So if you want to ask a question. question, you have it. Okay, so it's a it's something that really needs to be looked at. Um, 
other than that, let's continue with the uh, financials. So uh, if you would have, I guess bring up, uh, Jessica, the, uh, the financial sheets. Can you Uh, just before we just stop there for a second, uh, Albert, would you just say that one more time? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's important everybody's trying to learn how to say the word. <laughs> the word, okay. But everybody's got to say it. Okay. After I say it, okay? All right. Start to practice. Next <laughs> meeting. You don't want to take too much time. Uh, Go ahead. Go ahead. Manhattan Sack, the hot question one. Manhattan said, Waka Waka Wana. Yeah, you get Wama. Yeah. Right. I just made the last part. <laughs> Forget that part, next part. <laughs> okay, the first slide, uh, Jessica. Okay, uh, this this month, okay, uh, we're, we, we finally, we've separated WQIP money. Okay, so when we're looking at these numbers today, this is actually, I no longer have to do the deduction. In the yellow, you'll see uh, the balance. That is actually the funding that's available in, in CPF money for, uh, that, that's the actual cash available to us, okay? So let me just go to the top, okay? The starting balance in the working account was 1705349 The new funding for the month was 78,804.72. Uh, the interest on that account was 3,154.70. And um, there were some abstract expenses here uh, of, uh, I, there were some abstract expenses here, okay. And I don't, completely understand this, but that's okay. Um, so the, the balance in that particular account became 1,787,114.19. That, that's in the Chase working account. The New York high yield class account, okay, is starting balance was eight $8,377,060.25. The interest on that account for the month, okay, was 37,206.94. So the closing amount was 8,714,267.19. I'm sorry? Someone was not. Okay, okay. Um, so the balance that we have, in the community preservation account, okay, is ten million two hundred and one thousand three hundred and eighty-one dollars and thirty-eight cents. That's the, that is actually the number that we have to deal with. Um, we just talked this morning, okay, of um, of uh, how with the quick books, okay, where where hopefully we're going to move forward with getting some of this so that in the future. Again, the goal has always been that we would be have a meeting here and you'd know exactly what all the expenses are exactly for. So we're really not at that point yet, but obviously it's 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 in the works. Okay. Uh, let's go to the go I have a comment. So if we don't have an immediate um, expenditure coming, I I would suggest we transfer some more of the low interest. <laughs> into the high interest money yep okay we have a million and point seven i mean we don't need that much money laying an account doing nothing well we can do that and, and gain a little more interest on it for the four months but remember we have an acquisition that is currently in place but we can always transfer back. money okay it's amazing All right so what what do you want to do you want to let's what let's give us an amount you want to do a million dollars out of it uh, that sounds good. Or a million and a half. There's no penalty pulling out the money. No. And get, you know. no. So a million and a half. I mean, the more that's in there, the more you get. Mm. We only spend a couple thousand dollars a month, unless we're doing an acquisition. Unless we're doing an acquisition. Um, all right. Let's uh, let's do a, a a roll call or a, a okay. vote on this. Okay. All in favor of moving a million and a half dollars. Oh. Aye. Yeah. Aye. Yeah. Aye. Aye. Okay. 
Good idea. Is this on? Is this bill? Good idea. Been paid yet? I have to transfer my own money. Is it has not been paid yet. I have to call the guy, but I just haven't called him. And I'm a whole year of interest somewhere. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Jessica, next slide. Okay. Um, this is just the overview of how we're doing and how the year finished out. You, you can see that the 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 amount uh, from CPF funds from last year, okay, was two million three seventy nine four fifty two. Uh, you can see it's a little bit less than um, the prior year. Certainly, way less than COVID period. So, um, we have we have a trend in the right column. You're going to see. What's been collected so far this year is $77,604 for January and 158000 which is not recorded in our financials at this time because the check came in in April, is for what, $158,603.62. Okay. All right, so what will happen now in the future now, if we go to the next slide, I think this is a good slide that I asked to have. This is an interesting one, which is basically the check comes into CPF. So all I've asked, and, and if Shelby's been able to do this, is that the check, <clears throat> let's take for the month of January, the total check that came in was 121,255.90, okay? Uh, basically, CPF, the breakdown of that check is uh, CPF, uh, they need, actually, they, after you take the half a percent out for affordable housing, the check was 97000 the amount of money for CPF was $97,005.90. WQIP in January uh their their distribution was 19,401.18 and community housing was $24,250 so after all the deductions out of the check of 121,000 we received 977,604.72 okay next month when the the the, the the other monies that we had not we did not show was the two hundred and forty seven thousand, which was February. Uh, again, uh, WQIP got thirty nine thousand out of it, and community housing got forty nine thousand. Okay, so I just thought it was important for us to see the actual physical check. Gordon, I don't understand the second number down, and then the, the second number down is. Really, the the check came that comes in as a lump check. Yeah, I get. And, and then what happens is the, the the first CPF line is what the amount is for CPF taking out the affordable housing. Okay. And then the ninety seven thousand is less twenty percent, which goes to WQIP. So that's the nineteen thousand. And if you added the nineteenth the if you added the and then the community housing gets the twenty four thousand. It's twice. And and, yeah, and I think you took the money out twice. No. Yes. WQI <laughs> gets twenty percent. Affordable housing gets two and a half. Half. Gets half. That's why I don't understand why community half, housing. Half a percent. Community housing gets a half a percent. They get. They have more money than WQI. Because that's the way it was. WQI gets twenty percent, right? Yeah, but twenty percent of it, the half a percent was added added on to the legislation. It went from. No, that percent. I understand. But if the affordable housing is only getting half a percent, a half a percent, uh, the because the basically in the past it was WQIP got twenty percent of the two percent. Oh. Got it? Got it. And that's the difference. But it just, it, it, it basically, uh, you can see that, I just thought it was, in, 
I think it was good for us to see the checks, how they were coming and being dispersed. Well, I guess Tui's question is, the second line says CPF, and that's 97. That, so, that, that basically is showing that they've taken out the 24,000. The 19. Uh, to, to 24,250 automatically come out, came out of the 121. So it left not, the CPF 97. with 97. Gotcha. If you took 20% of the 97, you would come up with the 19401. Okay. Now I got it. And um, you don't get much anymore. <laughs> well, it, it, well, the thing is, the checking obviously the checks a lot. You know, the checks, but it, it's okay. I mean, it's it's uh, show, just showing the distribution of the check. That's all we're doing. Okay, since it turns into the CPF. Um, and um, any questions? God bless you. All right. Um, Much interest, you tell us. I mean, percentage wise. Can I get a motion to accept the financial yeah, report? Make a motion to accept the financial. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> okay. Um, First item on the agenda are, um, Tim, you want to just do a little update on uh, on West Neck Preserve? Oh, very briefly, uh, two things. One is, I don't know if this happened at the last meeting, but Dan Clark came and he cut back um, all the black locust saplings that were in this one area, uh, which will make it easier to gather some volunteers and remove um, some other junk that's going in there. Um, when the locust saplings were there, it was really impossible to maneuver. You kept getting hit by the thorns. Um, and also we want to get rid of them anyway. And then the other thing is I met with Dan Williams, um, Sarah Feinig, the other teacher couldn't meet that day. But we spent about 45 minutes at the preserve and he's very, very excited. Um, about bringing the students in, hopefully sometime in April, maybe early May, uh, to start monitoring insects on the preserve. And he actually envisions this as apparently his 12, 12 years left at the school. <laughs> and he envisions this as a very long-term project, which is great. Um, we'll see if uh, any students will be available in the summertime, but, uh, Anyway, we'll see. So that's where we are. What do you need volunteers for now? Um, there's multiflora rose growing, and then there's also black raspberry. Black raspberry actually is oh, not a bad thing. But again, um, if we need to go in there and weed at some point, it's really hard to maneuver with these spiky shrubs digging at your legs um, all the time. So I want to pull out the multiflora rose, which is very small right now and then just cut back the black raspberry. Well, can we organize some volunteers? I was thinking of Silver Beach. I was thinking of Silver Beach people to help out. Okay, so um, I'll give you Doug's phone number. Um, I know Doug Sherrod is always interested in Sean Davey. So um, what I'll do is maybe, we won't have to do it once, we can do it several. So we, see, we can pick dates or something. Yeah. Okay. I can send out an uh, email on the trail club list as well. Mm -hmm. I can send out an email on the uh, trail club mail. Okay. Just let me know. Give me a date. It'll be lots of fun. Okay. The only other, the only other thing we want to work on with that uh, West Neck Preserve is um, since we're doing all this, we we're going to have a growth there that will show native plantings. Right. Once we get to that point. Yes, it'll be a model that it will be available to the public to see what kind of plantings that they can grow that are deer resistant and that are native to the islands. Yes. Correct. Yes. And the only other thing is to include the ADA compliance. Okay, as far as the a little bit of a a path into the wooded area. Yeah, we could do the loop. Right. Um, and again, that is on the plan right now. Right. Um, you look at it. 
it's really a matter of how much how much we want to spend on on the ADA. I think we could. I think the thing we I think we had talked about is just from the parking area, mm -hmm. just to make it limited into that one area on the west side, yes. so like a trail in and out kind of yes. a thing. Okay. I have no idea. I have no idea the regulations of the ADA. Oh, you know what what really entails what kind of promotes the material materials um, okay. the plant shows different materials um i think we should spend money on that mm -hmm. i think we should spend money on that i agree i think that it shows thought and i think it's a good one i think we're should... getting at that age you know <laughs> <laughs> um not so fast <laughs> the other thing is i was with the school uh, Chris Raddy from uh, Shelter Island Schools, okay, on Wednesday, okay, where they have CNC machines there in, in the school to make mm -hmm. up signage. And I made an appointment to, uh, at lunchtime, to take him to the preserves to see what we're missing where, and is this something that the, the school can participate making, they have time to make benches and stuff like that. Some benches would be good. Right. So I, anybody who wants to come on Wednesday around noontime, uh, we, we can travel the properties and see where we want to have what. Yeah, maybe a premature, but. Well, it's not, but just let's get a, a rough. You can right. talk about it. Yeah, exactly. Um, oh, and that does remind me, uh, Dan Williams also had a suggestion to involve Mr. Conradi, who's the shop teacher, but he also does the media classes. And so um, when I was talking about how I want to do an article for the reporter, about all of this, when the time is right, um, he thought he would bring uh, the students and it would actually document the video uh, when they're actually putting in the material, the equipment, which is not very big, like cans but they bury in the ground and then the insects fall in the cans and then they look at the cans and what's in there. Yeah. Anyway, so big, okay. hopefully a big school involvement. Uh, the, the other thing is uh, we're, we're going to go to Dickerson, the, the Nick Moorhead bench that's in uh, Dickerson Overlook. The, mm -hmm. the memorial that we did there. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I, I want to to see, if I, we're trying to get the kids to maybe refinish on an a, annual basis, you know, the varnish that's on that bench. Okay, so rather than getting away from us, that they they can take care of this as a school project. Okay, mm -hmm. so I think I think it's um, it's good. We have a lot of things that they can help us with. Mm -hmm. they, it's outside their range. We 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 can do something else. But I think it's good to have an interface with. Oh, it's great. School, okay. Absolutely. Um, the, but before I continue, uh, maybe since CPF started with this thing with a, um, uh, this land is your land, maybe a little update from either yourself, Tim or Kathy on, on the out where the book is at this particular time. So the public knows where you are. I know, um, I, I got a lady at home that's been spending midnight hours working on we're getting closer okay so uh yes. just an oversight of, uh, you know book. Uh, well ed and i are almost finished the source notes that was about 60 hours of work right that exaggeration um really i think there's proofing left we're substituting some photos um we're hoping to get out in, in august i think there's going to be an exhibit at the um Historical Society on um, historical properties. I don't quote me. So we thought, combined with the book, I have a book, you know, opening um, at the same time. So if we're lucky, we can have it done by August. Yeah, the, the the exhibit is going to show the the potent the possible developments that could have happened That's it. in Shoulder Island, and that is also a component of the book. Um, and so, the, and that exhibit will run. Through December, so the idea is to have the book come out in August, ideally in tandem with the exhibit. August might be pushing it, but um, and and not the least okay is the, the 
the silent a person in your committee, okay, which is the eighth member of community preservation, which is Ed Schillingberg. He's an island person. Okay. Uh, he's still part of our committee, so to speak, and he's worked endless hours putting this together. The book is going to be 200, how many pages? 200, and what'd you come up with? Well, that was about the source notes, so. <laughs> I, it's probably 225 at this point. 225 pages. Why are you looking at me like that? I was just trying to think. It's 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 going to be big. It's a, it's a substantial book. So so it, it although it's a book that is being created, it's really not just community preservation, but it's all the lands of the island. But it's 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 good that it's part. You know, our, our CPF lands will be in that book. Yeah. Okay, so it's. Another reason why those QR codes, I think, are going to be really important to get mm -hmm. them back and we can update them and so forth. Okay, so. Um, 23 properties we covered or 30? Yeah, but I mean, it's really essentially a history of the island yeah. from the perspective of preserving property, but that's what it really is. Look forward to it. Um, to move on, okay, I sent everybody out, and I, we're not, today we're not going to get into it, okay, but we have an approved, it's a resolution that we got through the town board on um, volunteer stewardship. I sent everybody a copy of it. I think the time is now that we implement, get that steward, their volunteer stewardship plans in place. This is for the white property? No, uh, the, all, the, all, all, all the properties. We have people who want to participate, like oh. like in, in uh, Silver Beach. So w what we did is we drafted up something. Again, mm -hmm. Ed Schillenberg did this back in 2020, I believe. Okay? So people have to sign. Have to sign yes. some oversight and there's little instructions. And they, they report to us they're not an, a police agency, but they're really following since they're close by the preserve. They can be our eyes and ears to make sure that there's no dumping in the you know, different whatever the, you know, the criteria. So what I would like to, what I would like to do at our next meeting, OK, is I have a list of people that have come looking to participate, but I'd like to see here. We need somebody in our group to head that up. OK. And you know, be the oversight in terms of that. So read it, see if there's any questions about it, and let's pursue it at our next meeting. I'd like to go through page by page, maybe at the next meeting, so it's clear mm -hmm. what it entails. Okay. Somehow missed it. Huh? Somehow did too. I, did, I missed it. I too did too. Uh, I have copies right here. When did you send it out? Uh, during the week. I don't think I saw it. I don't think I saw it. I, I actually, I have the copies right here. Okay. I'll, just, I'll give you. I need to give you copies of it. Okay. Um, but we'll, we'll we'll discuss it at the next month's meeting. It's also is this also a liability thing if people were, or is that a separate thing? It, it's in that it's in that the document. Maybe you should resend it because I didn't say it in there. All right. I think this is the time that we've had, we have people who have uh, asked and I think it's the right time. We need them. We need them. Right. Okay. Um, I am going to where the, the, the revision of the acquisition plan. Um, I, I pulled a lot of pieces apart. Um, I've asked Jessica to really put it together and eliminate the sections that don't really pertain. Again, what we're doing is having, and I, having uh, the pages weren't numbered, there were a lot of little pieces there, okay? So uh, we will discuss this further, okay? But WQIP, as I understand it, that I thought we were creating something, but I guess they're, they're following the suit that CPF will be just CPF in terms of land acquisition, okay? It's not gonna be, including all the, the the issues because the legislation was so confusing with WQIP and CPF. So CPF will be strictly based on our criteria and things that involve land acquisition and community preservation. The WQIP, the Water Quality Improvement Plan, they'll have their own thing with their own project list, okay? So we're, we're, we're moving forward with that. Um, Is that circulated? Or is it that's going to circulated? Yes. No, it's not circulated. It will be. Okay. It will be. Okay. Um, the, 
uh, the other item is the stewardship plans. Um, we have the white plan. I did send a rough draft out on that, but any you guys got that, right? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for some input, and I know how it is here today. So uh, how it was just a rough draft, okay, and we need to throw it through past everybody. So I'd like to get your comments or you, you add what you think is appropriate in that preserve. Yes, I, will, I, I read the text. It's okay. very good. Uh, first, first question is, how did we get the name of Aquatis Lane? <laughs> how, how did we get the name on it? We've been playing around with this name for a long time, okay? And uh, we really never came to a conclusion. Again, it's a draft. The, the feeling here at the last meeting we had, why not adopt Artist Lane? Because that's um, the family... The road there was Artist Lane, and it was part of the white family, the art, the art that followed that whole family. Okay, that, that's how that came about. That's good. I, I just didn't know how that. And then, 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 then there was a problem with we have West Neck Preserve. Okay, so you know we were talking about West Neck Creek, or something. Uh, Creek Preserve. So it got a little. So we were trying to make a separation. Okay, but Artist Lane is actually. Um, was what the sub development was all about. The other things that I have is on the uh, protecting ecology. Uh, the first thing is uh, we, we say uh, long uh, birds. I think that should be uh, wildlife. Yes, Not just wildlife. birds. Wildlife. Okay. That's the second item under the measures. And the other thing I have is, you know, we have a, we have fallen trees to clear it out. I think that's a good idea, but you have to choose which ones we might want to keep for the animals to enjoy. Yes. So How do you do that, Howard? Well, we have to look at it. Tim will help us on it. They like the bees or the insects getting into it. Well, quite honestly, the thing with the, the, the trees, it was like wood gathering. That was something that the town board wanted that people to do wood gathering. But the problem is there's no vehicles allowed in there. <laughs> so how are we getting out? I, I think we probably just have to have maybe uh, mules. One, one, uh, one, even clear the trails, I guess, to the 10 foot that we talked about. Yep. Mm -hmm. so, you know, that trail, uh, maybe once a year. So that's for the, the easement. The easement on that reads for uh, pedestrian for foot traffic only, and, and only uh, for, for a mere, uh, uh, emergency vehicles or something to that extent. So, I'm I I really do not want the public driving a pickup truck down there to pull stuff out. So I I that's just my feeling. Okay, I mean if if it was such that maybe we if there was firewood or something like that, I guess we could always get the town once once a year to move some things out and maybe and bring it down to where the parking area is. But I, the real goal here is not to have any vehicle traffic, you know, through and, and disturbing the private property. The other item I had on that is that somehow it goes along with your stewardship volunteer plans. Right. It's to clear the invasives when we can uh, certain times a year. Now you can't really see really all the invasives that are in there. It's pretty clear anyway. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like barberry, uh, honeysuckle, track ticks and stuff like that. We should be clearing some of that out of properties that are helpless with the tick problem also. So I just think uh, somehow Tim's help. And the yeah, th there does need to be sort of a multi year plan. To because there's one whole area which I think is part of it's in the preserve and part of it's in the it's in the easement on the easement. preserve area A. It's in the easement zone, so we have to sort of figure out how to sort of work that out. That's the, uh, the other thing is, uh, I think we need a trail map or a map of that, yep. uh, which I know probably working on, mm -hmm. so that we know where to go and where not to go. That's our signage too. I'm gonna. We're, I've got an appointment with Brand 
Johnson, who did the maps for the book as well as did some of the, uh, the maps there. So basically on all the preserves, what we're really looking to do is to get a, uh, a plastic uh, on each and every property on the back of the sign, a trail map on the back. So we post it on the back so people clearly know you know, where, you know, where, where it's at accessible. Okay. You know, the problems with some of the property is the thing with the signage that we, you know, using the small circles are fine. Okay. Um, and, and really the thing that I wanted to find out really from you is I, I thought on Simpson and on Manantic, okay. The other lots eight, eight and nine, I just thought a, a small little sign where the where the opening is. Okay, there's no car parking in there. Maybe just say a, a, a small a small sign low to the ground that basically says preserve um, or this lane or something like that. But nothing in you know not not a big sign like we normally have on our property. Just something really low, low keyed. Or something like that. We don't want more signage on it. Exactly. That's good. There probably should be a QR code so you could pick up a trail map if you wanted to go in from there. Yeah. 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 Oh, you mean on that sign? On that small sign. sign. Yeah. 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 Maybe that's one of the things we didn't put in that draft plan is having QR codes. I mean, we could include that in there, yeah. the QR code. Yeah. Uh, there's also a couple old pieces of equipment yes. uh, on the property. Uh, I thought maybe uh, just for historic value, we could clear that and just have them on display. If we find out some of the history behind it, does any, anybody have any idea where those come from? Or, uh, yeah, that old track. track yeah. Or you mean? yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm assuming that was all that was farmland. Yeah, the thing is, though, yeah. that prop, where that piece of equipment is is um, where we have only an easement. That that is an easement that's owned by a PLT. That's the, okay. Gotcha. Okay, so that's the issue that I have is that. We don't want people walking off that easement trail. Okay. So we're going to have to clearly mark this trail is this direction. We don't want people wandering on the property that doesn't is not community preservation. Okay. Okay. I, I thought that was going to be open to the public too, though. Uh, it, it it's a um, it, it's something I'm I, since it's kind talk, of like a main since, artery. No, since we're talking about yes, it is a main artery, but. It's limited to our easement is basically that 10 foot wide space, a trail that goes to four, five, and six. Okay. Okay. Um, it's interesting you're talking about PLT, and I'm going to talk about another issue that we have going on. Okay. Um, okay. That, that, you know, we have to be careful. I, I don't want too much signage. That's what the slow okay. down Okay. It's one more thing. Recently, last year, we've seen coastal erosion. And I think you know, I have to walk that perimeter of that property to see how that's been affected. There. Because we've had an awful lot of erosion around the island on the perimeter because of the high water line. So it, it, it's interesting, you know, um, the Peconic Estuary program, I guess they're, they're there's a whole issue there um, where they're trying to maintain the, the marshes and eliminate hardening of the shoreline. Um, it, it's interesting that uh, we, it, it, it's one of the things that um, need to be considered going forward, meaning properties that are along the shoreline, okay, that how do we, how do we, some value like we have also um we have the tuttle property which really falls into that category as well okay it's marsh okay so um i i since we're talking about that um i did have in fact have a conversation with uh, but I, I didn't realize the town was so engaged with them okay but i, I had put a call out earlier and i did have a conversation and they would really like to come to be more involved with the CPFs of the East End area, and they have offered to come to our meet to come to a meeting and give us a rundown as far as their programs and 
that you know informational point they were sort of excited that uh, our town has been involved with them and i think it's a good idea the more help we can get with preservation the better we are Absolutely. right so um who was, it, who was this gordon this was a lady by the name of joyce novak okay and i guess a kind of estuary kind of estuary yes okay um so let's, uh, uh, is there anything else that you saw that really stood out to you on that? Uh, it's, just a, it's a very important, great acquisition that you've done there. It's wonderful for the Manantan Peninsula area. It goes across from the street from the uh, preserve property, which is Dickerson Farm. Right. So we really appreciate it and enable it to have that. This is, the evasives are something that we really don't have a, uh, you know, we go in, we handle them in a particular one. When we bought the West Neck Preserve, we, we, we did radical surgery there, okay, and that probably was the best thing that we ever did because it's not, you get it all out of the way almost at the one time, okay, and we're still dealing with the mugwarts, but at least we're on the right pattern. That's why the West Neck Preserve is going to be a great property for, as a as a model of how preserved land should be handled, but we we really don't have a we don't we maybe we should put a certain amount aside on each property when we do the budget in the, in, in this coming year and say hey when we when we put our budget before the town board for acceptance maybe we should include an item on each one of these properties that have that have those issues. That's why it's important at budget time to really everybody has an assignment of different properties but what would you like to see so that we can put it in in our plan okay every all, every property we have has invasives of some sort of them, and they should be dealt with every year there should be a real maintenance program every year okay to hire somebody and, and the other one we didn't work on howard which i really would like to get your input on okay is the uh property that's on the causeway oh yeah <laughs> one which was that nine acres there okay boy that was just absolutely flooded after i know that storm that we had i mean there's only one little section there but that's a living piece of land there meaning the marsh is there it, it, it has good things there um the only other thing is um I have under old business, okay, is um, obviously the resolution passed to move forward with the Tuttle Needham property. Uh, how it, it it probably is going to be uh, three to four months before they got the county goes through its, it, it has a long list of things. I received the contract for that today, so I was going to give it to them to go over. I have to leave, that's why I'm just telling you. Oh, you have to. I do. I have it. Just one day of duty. The contract for Tuttle Meetup. Signed by the Tuttle Meetup. So right. now it will be signed by the supervisor. Um, so the thing is, um, with what will what will wind up? I mean, we normally do. We, we pick up. We do the uh, the surveys. Okay, we'll do the surveys on that particular piece of property. But it'll be. It'll be you know, the county works slow. Well, they're, trying to, they're trying to increase the process, but it'll be probably three to four months before it's completed, okay? And um, only, only nice things heard about that acquisition. Uh, that, that basically is what I have on the agenda. Does anybody have anything they wanna add on to anything that we've discussed in the session? Uh, no, but this is a new thing. New thing, okay, that's good. Um, just very briefly, uh, Dan Clark and I keep talking about this. I keep talking, but it comes up. We do have to monitor the beech trees at the um, Mildred Herd, the trees that are dying. Yep. So we just need to keep an eye on that, see what happens this spring, if any leaves come out, and if they're really uh, just, if, if it will become a hazard at some point. Yeah. yeah. I would just while well, I'm thinking about this, and I know you're here today, and it's good. Good. Um, the uh, I'm 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 just a little confused with some of the properties that are part of the subdivision when they put that property aside. Mm -hmm. That doesn't fall underneath your. You don't maintain that. 
No, the only thing we need is the nature preserve property. And they, it's, only those pieces of the property that are in there. So there's a town, who, who takes care of that property then? You know, I'm talking about locust woods, for example. Okay, I know we've cut land in there. Okay, um, maybe is that something that should be looked at? I'm just asking the question. Well, I know Ed's been doing that on a lot of properties that are maintained by a lot of people. Maintained by maybe the uh, yeah, recycling center. That they do it, you know, mow it or something like that, but it's really not recorded anywhere. And then we have a lot of property that's part of subdivisions. Like I'm, I'm thinking of, um, you know, they, we have a lot of property that where there were subdivisions, the land was put aside. And the best one I can think of is the one that's right uh, next to, um, it's right in the nursery property. There's a one acre piece that's right attached. When the nursery was purchased, there's a one acre piece in there that belongs to the, um, it belongs to the town. Okay, but I don't think there's anybody o overseeing it. And I guess, um, you know, what I, when I, when I looked at some of the properties, since we obviously water is such a big issue here on the island, again, I don't know the ins and outs of that, but is, is that, Property, I guess I would ask the, 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 the council people here, is that something that could be used in the future for um, water extraction? I you know, I'm just wrong. Um, I rejoined, uh, I joined the meeting a little bit late. Um, is it a CPF designated property? Yes. No, it's not a CPF property. So it's just a town owned property. Okay. Yeah. So the commissioner of public works would be in charge of maintaining it. Um, but yeah, it's, I don't think it has any restrictions then. It, we'd have to go back to the deeds and covenants and right. restrictions on it. I'm sorry. I didn't really, I didn't realize you were there, uh, Amber. Okay. Uh, no problem. It's, it's, it, anyhow, it's, it's a, uh, it's a good point. I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're concerned and, Areas that might serve a purpose going in the future. That's all. Okay. Um, that's all I have for today. Okay. In the public session. Thank you, Howard. Okay. And um, appreciate your input. Um, all for a meeting. Can we uh, get get a uh, motion? Adjourn. Anybody? Anybody? Anybody, anybody, anybody yeah. in the anybody in the public that really wants to? Uh, I apologize for not opening it up at the beginning. Okay, but uh, does anyone really have any comments to make at this particular time before us community preservation? I I just had a question. Are we going into executive session today? Yes. So, um, Jessica, if you could keep the Zoom open for me then, and I guess Megan. Well, I guess Megan's already left, but. Benjamin will have to leave as well. Okay. Um, all right. I, I'm going to make a motion. I did make a motion to go in executive session. I neglected to mention we are going into executive session to discuss potential CPF acquisitions that are currently underway or future acquisitions. Okay. So um, <laughs> this is close to an executive session. Thank you. Thank you. Take a break for a minute and then we'll come right back. Yeah. I don't know the answer to that. <laughs>